How's it going everyone? David from DoD Media. Today we're having a quick look at markers in After Effects. Probably going to be a few things that you thought, yeah, that's pretty obvious, you can do that with markers. There's probably going to be a few things that you may not have known of. Let's jump in. So let's just go ahead and create some text. Hello. Then we're going to select that text. I'm going to use my control spacebar shortcut for the effects console. Uh, if you don't have that, highly recommend it. It's free. There'll be a link in the description. Just lets you access stuff way more quickly in After Effects. And I'm going to add the typewriter effect. If you don't know how to get to that because you don't have the effects console, come up to your effects and presets window, which if you've got a lot of effects and presets, can take a little while to open. And in there you type typewriter and there you'll see the preset animate in typewriter. There we go. Now let's hit U on the keyboard. It'll show our keyframes. Okay, so we want this to take 10 frames. So we'll go to the start of that clip, hit shift and page down, and I'll jump ahead 10 frames. And there we go. Now it takes 10 frames to write on. So let's hit a marker right on that 10 frame mark there using the asterisk symbol. If you don't have a number pad, it'll be somewhere above eight or one of the other numbers on your keyboard. If it's a QWERTY keyboard, if it's not a QWERTY keyboard, then you're just, you're just gonna have to find it. Okay, so cool, we've got a marker there. So now let's imagine that you have this in a big composition and you want to, you know, pre-comp that hello with some other assets. So you would go shift control C to pre-compose it and you would move all the attributes into that new composition and we could call it, um, I don't know, text comp. Okay, cool. Now my marker's gone. Well, if I go into that, and I add a marker on the composition. And to do that, you just make sure that none of your layers are selected and you hit that asterisk symbol. And instead of placing it on a layer, it will place it on your timeline. But now it's still not showing up. And I don't wanna to have to be going back and forth matching time codes to put those markers there. So instead what I can do is just right click, come up to markers, update markers from source, bang. Now it will look at that composition, look at the markers that are on that composition and bring them through onto that layer. Pretty cool. So now let's say once it's finished writing on, we want to animate it to uh, move upwards. Let's go up to there. All right, let's just add a little bit of a nice smooth keyframing with motion, which again, very, very highly recommended uh, plugin from Mount MoGraph not free, unfortunately, but it's worth every penny. Okay, hello, lovely stuff. And we'll get another one coming in here. And this one will say, how are you? Cool, now I will disable the position on this one and I will just parent it to my hello one so that it matches that movement as it's typing up. Oh, it's nice and smooth. Hello, how are you? Cool. Now let's say once that has moved up, well, I can add a marker there, right? And then I can go back to my comp and I can say uh, markers, you know, update from source. Cool, so that way I know that hello animates up to there, then it moves up and then how are you writes on to there. And that marker is the point at which my animation has finished for that text. But let's actually say that in this comp, we wanna have a protected zone for this animation, meaning that no matter how much we time remap it, um, it won't affect the speed of that particular section of animation. So we'll come back to the very beginning of the composition, hit our asterisk again, and then hold Alt or Option if you're on a Mac, click that marker and drag it along. And let's drag it to two seconds. Now you can see what's happened there is that it's actually created this, it's a split marker that will last for that protected duration but it's still white, which means that it's not actually acting as a uh, protected region. So if you double click that marker, it will bring you into the composition marker options. Now here you can actually define the, the full duration. So I'm gonna make it 125 and that way it lands on a two second exactly lovely stuff. I'll call this uh, protected region. Let's make it red just because. And then here in the responsive design time, you can see we can actually make it a protected region and now that section there is protected no matter what we do. But still we're not seeing it here. So we do that thing again. Right click, markers, update. And now we have that protected region there. So no matter how much I were to, you know, retime this, 
that protected region would remain and everything else would then be super sped up. Does that make sense? And of course you don't need to use the split markers for protected areas and stuff. You could literally just have say like marker there, split it for I don't know, three seconds roughly and then say, okay, this section is going to be um, animation hold for voiceover. And that way you are just able to give yourself some markers, some reminders while you're working that, you know, that section there, you're going to need to hold it. And of course, this doesn't just work for composition markers. You can also add this to layers individually. So I could add a marker there and say, right, that section there is going to be uh, blue. If I can find blue and we'll just say um, timer map. Cool, so that section there, we're gonna time remap it in the final animation. Anyway, there you go. It's not anything magic, but it's very, very handy to know that you can do more with markers than literally just mark within one composition. You can make it follow up that layer tree. You can split it so that you can add, you know, a protected region or a color coding or a note for yourself if you're working. And it works on compositions and on layers and you can update them it's, it's great. All right, if I've missed anything about markers, any way that you can use markers in After Effects that I have not mentioned here, drop it in the comments below because I will find that very interesting and other people might also find it very interesting to learn from. I mean, we're all, we're all learning on YouTube, right? The amount of time I still spend learning on YouTube is insane because there is so much that you can do in this software. All right, give it a thumbs up if you like this video. Hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.